Welcome back to English for Specific Purposes on Telescola. I am Mr. Daryl. And I'm Ms. Tatia. Gamarjo bak me Tatia wa risk idarilia. Etili osqueni da bruna ba chwen Telescola shi. Chwen zalian beuri sa intereso temit ki brunda bit. Let's get started. Ms. Tatia, what are we talking about today? Um, Mr. Daryl, I think that today's topic is business again. Very good, yes. Business for B2 level. Um, we have our agenda we would like to go over for today. Yes, I think that before we start the lesson, we have to look through our agenda. Okay, after our introduction, we are going to have a look at the vocabulary for today, uh, followed by a look at the reading text that we've chosen for you, some grammar exercises and points, and a summary, plus, of course, homework to wrap it up. I think that we have to start there. Let us begin. Um, first off, yes. we have a question for each other. In your opinion, Ms. Tatia, what would be an ideal company for you to work for? Oh, I have thought a lot about it, you know. The company where I would have freedom, where I would have uh, the feeling that I'm valued and respected would be the best place for me to work for. And what about you, Mr. Daryl? It's hmm, a great answer. I, I'd say a company that has some sense of um, social responsibility, uh, who look after the community that they're working with and in, I would say. Yes, I agree with you. And another question, would you rather have freedom at work or would you prefer a manager who closely monitors your work? Um, I think I'd prefer a bit more freedom because uh, I, I think I'm more productive when I have my own agenda to work with and I can set my own pace. The same about me. Of course, I prefer the situation where I'm empowered and I have freedom to do uh, things as I think is right and I'm much more productive in this kind of environment. Sounds like a great work environment. <laughs> yes. Okay, I think that we have to look at our first set of vocabulary mm -hmm. and let's start. Let's see what the first word is. The first word is to empower. To empower is a verb and in Georgian it means upleba mosilebis vincheba. Mr. Daryl, how would you define this word? And uh, to empower is to give someone the authority and the freedom to do something. So we have an example here. We prefer to empower our sales staff to make decisions without always having to consult their supervisor. So I think that the example also shows that everyone refer prefers to be empowered uh, and to make decisions on their own when they are. Very there. good. Okay. Let's move on to the next word, and the next word is job satisfaction. Job satisfaction in Georgian means samsahurit kmakopileba. Does it mean when you are satisfied with your job and when you are happy with, with what you are doing? Precisely, um, Tatia. It's when you feel that you have a sense of um, satisfaction from the work that you do. Uh, I, I think a good example might be the sentence we've got on the screen. Many people are more interested in job satisfaction than in earning large amounts of money. Do you think that's true? Yes, that's absolutely true because when you, when you have this job satisfaction, you don't think about your salary. But you might have good salary, but if you don't feel this job satisfaction, you are not happy at all. Well said. Okay. The next word is autocratic. Autocratic is an adjective and in Georgian it means diktatoruli. Mr. Daryl, how would you define that word? Uh, autocratic is when you demand that people listen to your point of view and that you don't pay attention to what they think or what they say. Yes, you're absolutely right. So once again, autocratic in Georgian means diktatoruli, and we have an example here. An autocratic management style often results in high levels of unhappiness amongst the staff, which is absolutely right. So we both said that we are not, that we wouldn't be happy to work under the autocratic management. Not at all. Let's move on to the next word. 
um, hands-on, an adjective, hands-on. Uh, the definition of hands-on, Ms. Tatia? In Georgian, it is and how would you define it in English, Mr. Dario? Hands-on is being closely involved with the management and the organi organizing of things within the office. Okay, one, so once again, hands-on is an adjective and in Georgian it means and as it is an adjective, um, a sentence might be she's a very hands-on manager. Okay. So the next word we have is laissez-faire. Laissez-faire uh, is an adjective and in Georgian it means ne baze mishvepuli. So how would you define this word in English, Mr. Daryl? Uh, laissez-faire is uh, originally I think a French word, but we use it in English now and it's uh, unwilling to take too much of an involved interest in what, what's going on. So a lot more of a relaxed uh, point of view or management style. Okay, so laissez-faire is an adjective and in Georgian it means ne baze mishrepul. So, okay, and I think that it's time to practice the words and find out how well we remember the, the meanings of the words, okay? I think that we have to match the definitions with the words, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. Okay. Can you read the definition and I'll try to guess the word. Very good. Uh, here's the first <laughs> definition. Uh, demanding that people obey completely without asking or caring about anyone else's opinion. Okay, I'll try and I think that it was autocratic. Autocratic, let's check. Let's check. I think I'm right. And well I'm done. Right. Okay, so demanding that people obey completely without asking or caring about anyone else's opinion and the right word was autocratic. Very good. Now next one, I will try, I'll read the definition and it's your turn to guess I'm the word. Looking forward to it. To give someone official authority or the freedom to do something. Mr. Daryl, what do you think is the word? Well, uh, based on the definition and what we've talked about earlier, I would say it is empower. Oh, let's check. And you are right, empower. So, to give someone official authority or the freedom to do something is empower. Excellent. Now I will try. Okay. Okay. Let me read the uh, sentence for you. Yeah. Unwilling to get involved or to influence other people's activities. Is that okay. Yeah? So let me try. And I said that I would like to work in this kind of environment. And I think that it was laissez-faire. Let's Let me check, and I'm right. Perfect. So, unwilling to get involved in or influence other people's activities is laissez-faire. Okay, now you read. Okay. Okay. The feeling of pleasure and achievement which you experience in your job when you know that your work is worth doing. Yeah, I know this word for sure. We've talked a lot about it and it's job satisfaction. And you are right. Okay, so the feeling of pleasure and achievement which you experience in your job when you know that you wor your work is worth doing is job satisfaction. And we all want that. Yeah. Okay, and the final one is really obvious. So let me, let me read the definition closely involved in managing and organizing things and in making decisions. This is hands-on. Hands on. So we are right. So closely involved in managing and organizing things and in making decisions. And the right word for yes. this definition is hands-on. Hands on. Okay, I think that we know the words quite well. Yes, indeed. Uh, and uh, I think that we have to read a very interesting text today connected with business. But before we read the text, I think that we have to learn some more words. OK, mm -hmm. let's start with the first with the set of vocabulary. And I think that there will be it. I would like you to read the first word. I, I would love to. Uh, the first word is casual. <laughs> Uh, casual. Casual in Georgia is an adjective and in Georgian it means So we usually use it with 
clothes, right? For example, casual clothes are clothes which are not official, right? And which we wouldn't wear in special occasions. Exactly. You wouldn't wear it in a formal occasion, uh, for example, a ceremony or something like that. Yeah. So casual is an adjective and in Georgian it means oveldriori. So for example, we have an example here. Everyone else was in jeans and casual clothes while I had my office clothes on. So jeans are usually considered to be casual clothes, right? Yeah, okay. jeans and a t-shirt maybe. Yeah, okay. The next word is job seeker. Job seeker is a noun and in Georgian it means I think that the word tells you the, the meaning itself. It's, so one of those, it's one of those words where the meaning is pretty much in the sentence, yes. in, the, in the word. Uh, someone who is seeking a job. Who is looking for a job, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So an example here is an education system that produces unfocused job seekers is clearly unhelpful. Oh, it's a very good point. Yeah. So we have to have the job seekers who are really focused on what they want, right? Yeah. Okay. And the next word is to enforce. It's a verb and in Jordan it means izuleba. To enforce. Mr. Daryl, can you define the word for us? Definitely. To enforce is to make people obey a law or to make sure that they follow the accepted um, standards. Okay, nice. To enforce is a verb, and in Georgian it means izuleba. Enforce. And an example we have is? I'll read the example. Uh, the new manager failed to enforce any sort of discipline. Oh, okay, that's very bad. When a manager cannot enforce any, any sort of dis there discipline. There might be chaos in the office. Yeah. Okay. And our new word is perk. Perk is a noun, and in Georgian it means sargebeli. So is it connected with, with jobs usually? I mean, the perks? Yes, do yes. people get perks at work? Uh, you do, you definitely do. In certain kinds of jobs, it might be that little extra thing that you get money or perhaps gifts uh, because you're doing a good job, um, and it's something extra to the normal salary that you make. Yeah, I think that. What about, uh, for example, company car? Yeah, you might get a company car. Is you it a perk? Is it? It's a perk? definitely a perk. Perk. Uh, you might even get a company phone. Yeah. A company laptop and so on. And what about bonus? Bonus and some kind of extra money you get. Is it considered as a perk? If you've done a really good job in the year, they might decide to give you a bonus, and that is a perk as well. Okay. Now it's clear. So perk is a noun, and in Jordan it means sargebeli. And the example we have is a company car, a mobile phone are some of the perks that come with the job. So anything you get apart from the salary, I mean extra benefits, they are called perks, right? Exactly. And the next word is to showcase. And showcase is a verb. And in Jordan it means tsardgena chveneba. Okay, how would you define the words? Uh, to showcase is to show the best parts of something. Uh, to make a, put a focus on something that's the uh, attractive, the most attractive quality of something. Okay, clear. So to showcase is a verb, and in Georgian it means tsardgena chveneba. And for example, a sentence might be, we wanted an exhibition that would showcase all of the different kinds of things that we do. A, a great sentence, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now, the next word is bond. Bond is a noun, and in Georgian it means kavshiri. How would you define that word, Mr. Gerald? A bond uh, is a close connection between two people, perhaps because of work, or perhaps because of an another kind of relationship. Mm, yes, now I get it. So, bond is a noun, and in Georgian it means kavshiri. So, team building activities help develop close bonds among the employees. So I think that it's really, really important to develop close bonds between the, uh, among the employees, right? Exactly, and team building is, a, is an important part, perhaps, of uh, most offices. Okay. Now, I think that we have finished with the words and it's time to read a text, mm -hmm. which will give us uh, quite uh, in interesting information about, about very business. Cool. But before we move to the text, I think that we have to discuss some, some questions, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
Mr. Daryl, what do you wear at work? I'm really interested. And how do you decide? And does your workplace have a dress code? Uh, well, well, uh, well, good questions. Uh, as you can see, I am wearing not very casual, uh, not extremely formal either, so somewhere in the middle perhaps. And uh, my workplace doesn't actually have a, uh, a dress code, but I like to wear sort of partially formal and partially casual. Wow, okay. What about you? Um, as for me, you know, just I'm not uh, asked to wear some kind of uniform, but of course I, uh, I prefer to, to wear some formal clothes, okay, not casual ones. Or so I, I usually have the uh, communication with my students, so I think that it's, it's better to, work, to wear some formal clothes. You Although present... there is no, no, no dress code uh, yeah. at work. You want to present an image to the students? Yes, kind of. So the way people dress in the workplace has become more relaxed in recent years. Often there is no dress code anymore, but does that match customers' and clients' expectations? Do you think that? What do customers and clients expect? Uh, well, I think in the old days there was an expectation that someone who works in an office or in a, in a shop or a store should dress a certain way. But I think now uh, most people are quite comfortable with casual dress in all kinds of work. Yeah, I totally agree with this uh, statement here, that it has become more relaxed in recent years. But still, I think that if you have uh, direct contact with the customers, it's better if you have some kind of dress code and just uh, yeah. be dressed in formal style. Yeah. Okay. You leave a good impression when you dress up. Yes, I think so. So I think that we have to read the text which is connected with this dress code and how, dress code and how people are usually dressed at work. But now let's read it and find out what the text tells us. So, what do you wear at work? How do you decide? Does your workplace have a dress code? Clothing really matters to organizations as well as to individual workers and it can have a deep psychological effects. What we wear has a real impact on how we feel about ourselves, says Ariana Huffington, founder of CEO of thrivesglobal.com. And that in turn, she adds, influences our work, our confidence, creativity, ability to focus and collaborate. Her research shows that 80% of employees have increasingly experienced casual dress codes at work. Nevertheless, according to TotalJobs.com, the average female worker still spends five months of her life thinking about what to wear at work. No surprise, perhaps, since more than a quarter of women have had to deal with unwanted comments about their appearance at work, and one in ten has been sent home to change as a result of their outfit choice. By contrast, 88% of men say their work dress code causes them no concerns. So what we wear at work is subject to generational differences too. The magazine CEO Today reports that the younger generation are much less tolerant of dress codes and that a clear majority of young job seekers would have a negative perception of any company that enforced a dress code. According to the study by outdoor clothing company Stormline, allowing employees to wear what they want can make them happier and more productive. With the majority of employees, especially millennials, favoring more casual clothing, many employees are offering casual dress as a recruitment perk. Even formal professionals such as law and accountancy are becoming more relaxed. Dressing comfortably trumps Dressing to project a sense of power, says Professor Karen Pine of Hertfordshire University. Casual dress, she explains, enables workers to be independent and showcases their personality and attributes by how they dress rather than the position they hold. This leads to stronger bonds between co-workers and removes barriers, enabling everyone to get on with their jobs. Still not sure about your organization's dress code? At Forbes.com, HR expert Liz Ryan reminds readers of the need to communicate policy clearly, to involve the whole workforce, and to encourage conversation. One of the signs of a healthy workplace, says Ryan, 
is that people are discussing and debating questions like what's okay to wear to work around here. Now I think that we have finished with the text and now let's try and do the exercise and check how well we remember the text, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let's look at the, at the sentence and I, I think that we have two options and we have to choose the right, right one, okay? So please read the statement. I'd love to. Young people are either more or less likely to apply for a job at a company with a dress code. And I think the right answer is less likely because I remember from the text that they don't like uh, this dress code. So they would apply for the job where they don't have dress code. So let's check. Uh, and I was right. Perfect. Yes. And why? Here is the answer. CEO Today reports that the younger generation are much less tolerant of dress codes. Yes, you're right. Okay. Now the next statement I'll read and you will try. Okay. Mm -hmm. Men are more or less likely than women to spend a lot of time carefully thinking about what to wear to work. What do you think? Well, uh, I suppose it depends on the individual, but I think uh, in general, uh, I'd say less. Yes, men are l really less likely than women to spend a lot of time carefully thinking about what to wear because we had a uh, we read in the text, the average female worker still spends five months of her life thinking about what to wear to work. Five months! It's such That's, a long time. That is a very long time. <laughs> okay, and the next statement, please. Allowing employees to wear what they can uh, make them more or less productive. I think that it makes them more productive. Let's find and out. I think that I'm right because uh, we read allowing employees to wear what they want can make them happier and more productive. Well done. Okay, and I think that we have successfully finished with the exercise and it's time for grammar and today's grammar topic is present tense. So, so we're we are going to review it, yeah. right? So we're going to review what uh, we talked about last semester. Yeah. Okay, now let's look at, uh, uh, at our slides. Uh, so when do we generally use present simple? Mm -hmm. There's a few times, uh, a few uses for it. Uh, when we talk about current habits, when we talk about how often things happen, when we talk about permanent situations, Ms. Tatia, when we talk about the states uh, of things and general truth and facts. You're absolutely right. And one of the examples can be, for example, Toby walks to work. It means that it happens generally in present and it's a regular action, isn't it? Yes. Okay, now let's move on to present continuous tense. We use present continuous for actions happening now, tempor temporary series of actions, temporary situations, changing and developing situations, and annoying habits, usually with always. Okay, Mr. Taylor, can you give us one example of sure. present continuous? Sure. Uh, Mike is driving to work at the moment. So at the moment, he's going off to work. He's in the process of doing that. Correct. Okay. Next one is present perfect simple. Mr. Gerald, can you tell us when we use present perfect simple? I'd love to. Uh, situations in states that started in the past and are still true. That's one use. Another use is a series of actions continuing up to now. Another use would be completed actions at a time in the past which is not mentioned, uh, not specified. And a further use is completed actions where the important thing is the present result. Okay, uh, I agree with you. And one of the examples might be, she has worked in this company for over six years. So she started working here, here six years ago and she's still working. So it kind of uh, involves the time from past to present. So that's why we use present perfect tense. Perfect. Okay. And one more important thing, I think that we have to mention that we have verbs. They are called state verbs, which are not normally used in continuous tenses because they don't describe actions. For example, I see what you mean, and we can never say I'm seeing what you mean because see is a state verb which never takes ing for. And I think that there are plenty of verbs like that. Believe. Right? See, smell, taste. 
and we're going to uh, to talk about it later. Yes. Uh, more about it later, okay? And I think that it's time to practice and see how well we remember these tenses and how well we can use them. So let's do the exercise. So here we have sentences and again we have two options and we have to choose the right one. So I think that it's your turn to start. I will read the sentence, okay. Mustatia. Elizabeth either usually goes or is usually going to bed at around 11 o'clock. And I know the answer. I can see here usually, so it means that it's a regular action. So I can not use the uh, ing form, I'm, I mean continuous form here. So I would say Elizabeth usually goes to bed at around 11 o'clock. This is a habitual action. Let's check and you're perfectly correct. Yes. You know I, I love grammar, right? <laughs> it, okay. It, it shows. Yeah. Uh, let me read the sentence. Uh, does air travel get or is air travel getting increasingly safe? I think here we can see the trend, the changing trend, and I know that for changing trends we usually use present continuous tense. So it must be, does air tra or is air travel getting increasingly safe? Perfect. Maybe it's right? Yes, I'm right. Well done. So the right answer is, is air travel getting increasingly safe? And we are right. Now I'll read and you will try, okay? You always come or you are always coming up with excuses for not having completed the tasks. I am irritated. Irritated and you have the use of always in there. Yes. Both of which together usually brings us to uh, the present continuous. Yes, so we said that when we want to show our annoyance, annoyance and irritation, irritation, we usually use present continuous and let's check. You're always coming up with excuses for not having completed the tasks. You're right. So the next uh, sentence, the manager holds or is holding meetings almost every week. Again, this is a, an action which uh, is a regular one, which happens every week. And I know that for regular actions, I usually use present simple. So I would say here, the manager holds meetings almost every week. I think you and are right, Ms. Tatia. And I think that we have come to the end of the lesson. Mr. Daryl, can you summarize the lesson? Yes, uh, as you remember, we spoke about vocabulary, uh, two kinds, for the text and in a general sense. We did the reading about dress codes at work and we did grammar, a review of the present tenses. Oh. And I think it's time for the homework now. We have, the we have a homework question. Write a paragraph describing the way you would structure your ideal company. Oh, I would like to write about it because I would, I would, I would write so many things <laughs> how I would like to structure the company I would run one day. In fact, we've got a model answer on the screen. Which, and where can students upload the answers? Well, they can send it uh, to the address that is on the screen right now. So I think that it's time to say goodbye to our, our audience today. Unfortunately. So goodbye and see you soon. Keep on learning. Until next time, goodbye. Bye.